This is our skills training project, soccer passing and shooting by Jai and Abs. Um, of all the skills involved in soccer, none is more important than the soccer kick, as evidenced by the large body of research surrounding its biomechanics. The soccer kick is a compound movement that involves many different actions across different joints and limbs. These movements and actions must be refined to an extent in order to perform a successful kick. Although defining the phases of a soccer kick is largely arbitrary, it is commonly split into the following six phases. The approach to the ball, planting the opposite leg, swinging the kicking leg, simultaneous flexion of the hip and extension of the knee, foot contact with the ball, and the follow-through. Someone can be characterized as a skilled kicker if they've been able to perform all six phases of the soccer kick in a coordinated manner, whilst, whilst having minimal variation in body movements when performing the skill. Both a soccer pass and the soccer shot are expansions of a soccer kick. What determines whether, whether a kick is a shot or a pass is the intention of the kicker. Although they're both types of soccer kicks, they can be performed with a variation in regards to power and speed of the kick as well as the intended placement of the ball. The soccer, the soccer kick is a skill that is often utilised for a variety of different reasons, some which include short passing, crossing, shooting, corner kicks and goal kicks. The reason for choosing one of these types of kicks is it depends on the circumstance. For example... Depend, depending on your position on the field, your inclined kick is going to, to differ. So if we compared a goal kick to, a shoot, to shooting for goal. Also, depending on the opposition and their position on the field and proximity of the ball. So for example there, if a player, an opposing player is blocking the intended target, a lob may be more useful than trying to throw a pass to the opposition. And also, the context of the game can influence the type of kick that is utilised. For example, if the team needs a goal in the last minute of a game, they'll be less patient with the build-up player and would rather shoot when there's an opening as to short passing to find gaps. For our classification, we identified that both the soccer pass and shot are gross motor skill, as well, they're both discrete. And both soccer passing and shooting can be performed in a closed or open environment. Applying Gentile's model, we identified in a game situation that it would be number 16, Performing testing measures, the quantitative measures, we had test, we're testing shooting um, shots on goal uh, for 5, 10, and 15 meters out, 10 shots each, 5 on each leg. Um, this is to simulate distance taken, uh, dis, uh, shots taken during games, measuring the amount of times the ball is shot at the goal. For passing, which this consisted of 30 passes in total, for, passes were taken at 5, 10, and 15 meters out with 10 passes at each dis distance, 5 on each leg. And the aim is to pass the ball between two cones that are placed 2 metres apart. The qualitative measures, I was present during the training sessions and analysed both the shooting and passing techniques throughout the phase of the program. A baseline test was, was performed at the start of the program and further tests were conducted once, once a week throughout the program's entirety to test skill retention. In the cognitive stage, the initial stage of motor learning and goal is to develop an overall understanding of the skill. Our prediction is that the learner will be in this stage throughout all of week one of the program. In the associative stage, the learner will become more comfortable with the skill and be able to refine certain facets of the movement. The learner will be in the associative stage as we predict during, when we, during this skill in week two and three and all of likely of week four. In the autonomous stage, the skill will become primarily automatic and the learner will be able to form in a wide variety of environments and circumstances. Our prediction is that it is unlikely that the client will be autonomous in the skill of shooting or passing in just four weeks as it takes countless hours and repetition of the skill to become autonomous and it is not guaranteed that all learners even reach the autonomous stage. The client will still likely be in the associative stage by the end of week four. The client characteristics, his name is Emmanuel Height. 208 centimetres and age 20. He doesn't play soccer, but he's partaken in partaken it socially with friends and he likes to stay fit, going to gym, valuing his health highly. 
The positive transfer of this is that he will not have an issue with the physical demands of kicking in soccer. Potential movements other taken in a gym, such as leg extensions, are utilised during a soccer movement, and he will already have some experience with the fundamental movement patterns and skills. However, a negative transfer of this is that he may already have developed motor patterns specific to these movements, and refinement of these patterns may take, may take familiarise as the learner's general inclination would, will be to perform these skills as he has always done. With instructions and feedback, feedback demonstrations and verbal feedback will be utilised to, ha- to help outline clearly in a practical manner what the client has to do, as well as provide information regarding key elements of the skill that the client should focus on. So for example, the client should the cl- show the client what the proper follow-through should look like through demonstrations and tell them an easy way to achieve it. Teaching style, as the client is in the likely in the cognitive and associative stage of learning, the instruction should be simple, clear and brief, but and also not overmolding. They should focus on the fundamental of the skill. As as the client progresses, instructions should be more individual and corrections should accompany errors. Demonstrations and verbal cues will be utilized individually and in unison are both effective techniques to help skill in the learner. Verbal feedback is used to help gain insight into what to do as well as error correction, outlining what went wrong and how to improve it, as well as to motivate the client. There are two types of augmented feedback or verbal feedback as we know. One is knowledge of results, so for example, well done, you hit the target, and knowledge of performance, or well done, your your leg swing was really good there. I will aim to give a, I'll, I'll aim to give information regarding correct performance, provide information in relating to error correction, and then encourage the client to help motivate them to incorporate the information. Initially, the feedback levels and requirements will be higher, but as the client becomes more proficient, the amount of feedback will decrease. We decided to use a distributed and practice over over mass practice as it is shown to have better effects on learning and skill acquisition so the shorter more frequent sessions will will assist in avoiding potential fatigue which can affect performance in week one we introduced the fundamentals of passing and shooting so for our passing skill we were completing passes against the wall from a different range of distances allowing the the uh the participant to get a range of what passing feels like as well with shooting, we were shooting, our skill was shooting without a goalie. This skill allows for the participant to get familiar with the big target and taking a range of spot kicks from about 10 metres out. In week two, we were introducing passing with the partner. We were also introducing trapping. By being able to stop the ball gives you a greater control when you're in possession. This is done by stopping the ball with the inside of your foot and allowing the ball to come to you. In this drill, trapping and passing the ball with both, we are trapping the ball with both non-preferred and the preferred foot. Also, with shooting, we were following on from week one and target practice. However, this week, we have targets on the top left and right corner the participant must aim for. In week three, we introduced the element of triangle passing, repeating what we did with week two, however, adding another person, creating a triangle. You can have the triangle close and do short one-touch passing, or stretch it out and do longer distance passing. With shooting, we were introducing the concept of taking it first time. The participant will have a volunteer rolling out the ball to either side of his body and he will take the shot whether he's on his left or his right foot. In week four, we were introducing the concept of combining our skills. This skill combines passing and shooting as the participant will have to pass the ball to the volunteer who will then lay it back off to the participant to have a shot on goal. This is an example of part practice as we break down the pass and the shot and combine it into one drill.